On today's episode of the Culture Corner, we look at the process of traditional pottery making as carried out by the potters of Nakambuta village in Singatoka. About 3,000 years ago, a group of highly mobile ocean-going foragers arrived in Fiji from the west, bringing with them a distinctive pottery tradition that archaeologists now call Lapita. Although pottery styles and decoration have changed over time, the art of pottery making has persisted in the Fiji Islands to the present day and is still practiced in the lower Singatoka Valley, the islands of Kandavu and Maloro, western Vanualevu, the Rewa Delta and the province of Ra. Each district has its own distinct signature in its pottery style and the techniques and division of labor differ little from those of pre-European contact times. Sometimes the men dig the clay, but it is almost always the women who are the potters. In the Fijian village of Nakambuta, located about 8 kilometers north of the town of Singatoka in the province of Nandronga, traditional pottery making techniques are used to create items such as bowls, animal figurines and jewelry. Fijian pottery making tools are very simple, namely a flat mallet or tala, a small flat round stone or vatu and a circular cushion made of coconut leaves. It must be noted that while the tools may be basic in design and that they do not use a potter's wheel, Fijian potters are able to achieve remarkable symmetry in their work. First, the potter must prepare the clay for use. Raw clay is usually not workable or durable enough to be used by itself to create ceramic pots, so another material such as sand, chaff or ground shell must be added to the clay to make it more workable and less likely to crack or break during firing. This material is called temper. Once the clay is ready for use, the potter begins to shape the vessel. First, she flattens a ball of clay with a wooden paddle then she uses a stone and the paddle to shape the clay into a smooth hollow hemisphere. Next, she joins two hollowed hemispheres of clay to form a hollow sphere. Using another wooden paddle, the potter shapes and thins the walls of the hollow vessel. She cuts a hole in the top to form the opening or the mouth of the vessel. The potter forms a thin coil of clay that she will attach to the pot to form the rim. After attaching the clay coil, the potter shapes the rim of the vessel. The pot is now fully formed and will now be left to dry for several days or weeks. Most of the water in the clay will evaporate during the drying process and that helps to prevent breakage during firing. Once the pot has thoroughly dried in the sun, it is fired in an open fire. Coconut husks and wood are used to fuel the fire. The pot has now been fired and is ready for glazing. The uneven color of the pot reflects variations in oxygen exposure during firing. Greater exposure to oxygen results in lighter colors, while the dark patches indicate areas where oxygen was restricted. While the pot is still hot from the fire, it is glazed with a piece of tree resin to give it a shiny finish and to make it waterproof. Therein lies the process of pottery making from Nakambuta village in Singatoka. Nakambuta village welcomes visitors and offers pottery making demonstrations to the public. The next time you happen to see a piece of authentic Fijian pottery, spare a thought for the work that was put in to make it and marvel at craftsmanship which has changed little over a thousand years. Social Plug Fiji Click on the subscribe button to stay up to date on all our latest videos.